Yo guys, what's up? It's Tim Burzens here and I'm back for you with more content. This one is gonna be a pretty fun video because we're gonna be talking about one of the topics that I think is so powerful for changing your metabolism. And the only problem with it though is that it's, it's kind of a longer term type of situation. So the topic of today is polyunsaturated fats or also abbreviated to PUFA. And PUFA is a pretty funny word to say, so have fun saying it. Uh, you know, that song, if you ever heard the song Gold by Kiara, the new one that's out, I always imagine that she's saying PUFA in the chorus, but I'm digressing. So let's get down to the point. Specifically, we are talking about stored PUFA in your adipose tissue, the fat tissue in your body uh, that your body uses just to store any kind of the fatty acids that are coming in that they're gonna use later for fuel. So some of those PUFAs get stored. Now, before we get into all that, I'm gonna give you guys a brief primer on PUFAs because I haven't really talked about them yet on this channel. Um, so basically the number of double bonds in the chain of carbons determines whether it's a saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, or polyunsaturated fat. So saturated fats have no double bonds. It's saturated with hydrogens. The monounsaturated is one double bond and the polyunsaturated have multiple double bonds. Now the problem is that double bonds are far weaker than single bonds are and they can break easily from things like heat, light, and oxygen. So anytime there's a polyunsaturated fat that's exposed to light, that's probably helping to break it, to peroxidize it down into the free radicals and to the breakdown products like acrolein and HNE1, which have tons, tons of negative effects uh, associated with them. But even once they get into your body, now they're getting exposed to tons of heat, to tons of oxygen, and that's just breaking those double bonds. And the more double bonds they have, the less unstable they are. So that's just kind of brief primer. I'm not going to go into it any further. I'll do that in another video. But here's the important part that you need to realize. When you are eating fatty acids, um, whether it be like, you know, uh, butter, coconut oil, beef, um, if you happen to eat vegetable oils and canola oil, um, you know, sun sunflower, safflower, soybean oil, all those polyunsaturated fat, vegetable oils, um, even like avocados, macadamia nuts, uh, what's the other, uh, olive oil. They, all of these have different types of fatty acids in them. So when you're looking at the fatty acid composition of your diet over the past two to three years, maybe on up to four years, the proportion of saturated to monounsaturated to polyunsaturated fats will reflect the adipose tissue storage of those fatty acids. So let me say that again. The past, your diet over the past two to three years will determine the concentration of the different types of fatty acids in your adipose tissue. And I'll link to the study below that shows this, but basically the reason this works is because your adipose tissue has a half-life turnover rate, which means that half of it will be uh, different. Half of it will be, you know how they say that whenever uh, every seven years you're a completely new human because all of your cells have turned over, they're all new cells. No cell in your body is the, ex is the same cell that it was seven years ago. Well, 600 days, that is where half of your adipose tissue cells have been turned over. So that means that anywhere from like two to three to four years, you will be working through those tissue stores. So if you're coming from a high polyunsaturated fat diet, eat, you say you ate like, uh, you cooked everything in, in canola oil, or you, you, know, you ate out a lot at fast food restaurants, which inherently always use vegetable oil, soybean oil, um, and, and the like, you, you, you decide, okay, okay, I understand. Poofas are bad for me, I'm gonna stay away from them. You start switching over to like coconut oil and butter and all that other good, all the other really, really good fatty acids. So you start doing that and um, you know, you start feeling a little bit better. But the problem is over the past two to three years, you've been eating those polyunsaturated fats and they're stored in those fat tissues. Because remember, the past two to three years of your diet will reflect the concentration of those fatty acids in your adipose tissue. So the way that you need to approach this is not this full blown attack on let's detoxify all the poof out of my body as quick as possible. Let me burn this fat so I can run through them and then I can be okay. And then I can be, you know, rid myself of the poofas. You don't want to do that. The reason is because poofas will, uh, anytime poofa is released into your body, it will slow down cell function, slow down metabolism, hurt your thyroid function and all the other negative host of effects that they have. So if you're slowing your metabolism down, you're actually going to slow down the poofa detoxi de detoxification, excuse me, because your liver is going to be working a lot harder. It's going to be working a lot slower and you're going to be experiencing all the negative symptoms like 
lower body temperature, uh, you know, cold hand, cold feet, and, you know, all the stuff we talk about with a low metabolism, all that, all that, all this shitty stuff. We don't, we don't want any of that stuff. So what you want to do, if you're, if you know that you're detoxing from PUFA, um, if the past two to three years you've been eating lots and lots of stuff that include PUFA and you know that you have some, some in your fat tissue that you need to, um, work through, then the approach you need to take is to eat more saturated fat. Um, especially from like coconut oil and butter. Coconut oil is 94% saturated fat and it has those medium and short chain triglycerides in it, which help to uh, ramp up your metabolic rate, help to get the cellular machinery going for the oxidative metabolism. So if you're eating more of those saturated fats, basically what you're doing is you're diluting. It's not really you know, the cellular way of actually, it's not actually what's happening, but you're diluting the polyunsaturated fats by giving more of those saturated fats so that they don't interact with each other and cause those free radical, um, you know, things that happen. Coconut oil has been shown that in, uh, there's like, uh, what is it? Like 4% of coconut oil is polyunsaturated fat. But if you put coconut oil in a room temperature room, it will stay fresh. It will not get rancid at all. It won't perox. None of those polyunsaturated fats will peroxidize for years and years and years showing that that saturated fat in the, in the coconut oil, excuse me, showing that that saturated fat in the coconut oil is preventing those PUFAs from interacting with, with each other and peroxidizing into those negative breakdown products that we don't want. So the same thing can happen in your body when you're releasing those stored PUFAs. By eating more saturated fat, you're first of all preventing the PUFA from coming out because there's already fat in your blood and your body's not going to be doing lipolysis, the breakdown of fat from fat tissue, uh, in order to uh, you know, use those fatty acids because you already have saturated fat in your blood coming in from the diet. But then second of all, it's also going to prevent them from interacting with each other when they do get released because there's just more saturated fat floating around anyway. So this allows you to slowly work through the polyunsaturated fats. Your liver will do something called gluco glucuronidation for your polyunsaturated fats. If you're allowing your liver to slowly glucuronidate those polyunsaturated fats out of your body, then they're not going to be going through the, the breakdown process that they usually go through that causes all the negative free radicals, negative symptoms, and all of that stuff. Now, once you get to the point where the polyunsaturated fats have been depleted, usually this is probably, I mean, I don't know if you, there's no way that you would actually know this for yourself, but if you get it down to um, a two to one ratio where a saturated fat is two and to every one polyunsaturated fat, then that's the point where you'll really start to feel a lot more of the benefits. You'll be able to eat less fat overall and you won't need to be consuming the saturated fat to dilute the polyunsaturated fat. And when that happens, um, you can start switching to, like I said, that lower fat diet, start ramping up the carbs, ramping up the sugar, sugar a little bit more. And that just helps to really get the metabolism going because of all of the beneficial effects of sugar and carbs and all of the stuff we've talked about before with that. So the approach is to take it slow, to eat a lot more saturated fat if you know that you are detoxing from PUFA. And if you aren't detoxing from PUFA or if you feel, wor if you feel like you feel okay, cutting out fat and making it lower, then go ahead and do that. Basically, you need to experiment with it. Go based on your personal diet history, based on how you feel on each type of diet and figure out what works best for you. But just keep in mind, half-life turnover of those fat cells is 600 days. The diet that you ate for the past two to three years reflects what your fat stores have inside of them. And you wanna make sure that you are not releasing PUFAs too frequently, uh, faster than your liver can glucuronidate them and then you can avoid all that negative shit that we don't want. We don't want any of that negative shit, okay? We want high metabolism, we want great health, we want all that good stuff, and polyunsaturated fats are gonna stop that. So stay away, polyunsaturated fats, do all that. Okay, now, that's it for me today. I'm gonna get out of here. I got a great day planned. Hopefully you do as well. Please uh, comment below. I've been loving answering the questions. I will answer some more questions. If you guys have any video ideas, please post them below. Any big questions, that big burning questions that you really wanna know, just let me know, put them in the bottom. Um, like, share, subscribe, trying to build this channel and get this information out there to as many people as possible because this information is so, so damn good that it just needs to get out to as many people as possible. And I'm excited to do that. Okay, now, for real, I'm out. Peace.